Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time around, it is my review of the 2000 martial arts action film, Romeo Must Die. Now, before I go any further sharing my thoughts on this film, I want to give a special shout out to Shine for requesting this review. And if there's another film, TV show, or a topic that you would like to see me discuss in the future, Feel free to donate to my PayPal. The link will be in the video description down below. And I will try to get to it as soon as I possibly can. I also have a Patreon if that option interests you as well. Now, Romeo Must Die is the second English language film that Jet Li did uh, for uh, American audiences. The first one that he took part in was Lethal Weapon 4. And uh, that film actually featured cinematography by the director of uh, Romeo Must Die. And he impressed one of the producers of that film enough that that got his foot in the door. And that's how he was able to get the role uh, in this movie. Now, it had been a long, long, long ass time since I saw this film last. So, uh... I didn't really remember a whole lot leading up to this most recent rewatch, and I had fun with it. I did like the film, but I definitely didn't love it. In fact, I honestly side with a lot of the critics uh, from uh, the time of this film's release, not necessarily in terms of the incredibly negative reviews, but at least when it comes to a lot of their common criticisms, especially when it comes to the film's plot. The direction, though, by uh, Andre um, uh, Bartowiak, I thought was pretty pretty good, uh, for especially for a first time director. I don't think he's really. I, I don't think he's a, a top of the line director. For instance, I think he is a guy who is a lot better suited for cinematography. Because as a cinematographer, you're not the one that's necessarily responsible for all the other aspects of the film production. You just focus on lighting and shot selection and, and working with the director in terms of aligning with their vision. You don't necessarily have to handle as many things. And I, I think Andre is one of those guys who definitely has a knack and, and a genuine talent for seeing things on film in a spectacular fashion, but he's not necessarily as skilled when it comes to the other areas of directing. And I think that's what leads to a film that looks flashy, looks stylish, looks slick in some shots, but then there's other sequences that seem like they're overcompensating or there's a little too much flash for uh, the, the, the tone of the scene, and, or there are sequences uh, that involve uh, a lot of high octane or high kicking action, and the way that it's directed is a little bit too amped up, so it kind of takes away from things a little bit. But then there's other moments where the direction is really solid and, and really uh, genuinely uh, great, and it's just one of those things where it was, it was an okay directorial debut, but you can definitely see some cracks already here, and you could see why some people are like, I don't know about this guy going forward. Uh, it, it, there's a lot of music video sort of tendencies when it comes to the direction in this. Um, when it comes to action scenes, the film definitely is at its best, but then there's other moments where even in those sequences, it kind of falls a little short, especially when it comes to the way that some of the fights are shot or, uh, the way that he's utilizing slow-mo or some sort of, uh, quicker, uh, camera, like winding up the camera real fast, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, and some awkward angles at times, but for the most part, I felt it was a relatively well-directed film, but there were some inconsistencies visually that were a little bit uh, noticeable at times. Uh, but I would say the direction of the film is ultimately more consistent to me than the script by Eric Burnt and John Jarrell. Um, this film is a very loose remake of Romeo and Juliet. 
And I don't really feel that the Romeo and Juliet angle really fits that well with the, what you ultimately see here. Yeah, it's called Romeo Must Die, but I don't think there was a single character that was ever called Romeo at any point in the movie. In fact, Jet Li's character, Han, uh, he never gets the nickname Romeo. I don't remember anyone ever calling him Romeo. Uh, actually, he gets called Akbar more often because he stole a cab and, and he stole a cab that was owned by this guy named Akbar. So it's like, okay, what it, what is the Romeo and Romeo must die? Who knows? Cause there's no Romeo. I guess it's only there because it's, Oh, you know, it's a Romeo and Juliet. It's a contemporary take on Romeo and Juliet, but it just doesn't really, uh, it doesn't really add anything to the script to me, the story. In fact, a lot of the Romeo and Juliet angles about uh, Black American and Chinese American gangs feuding with one another is honestly some of the weakest parts of this script and this overall plot. It takes away from the excitement and the thrills. It becomes boring. It becomes mundane. There's a lot of scenes that get very talky. Um... And in Romeo and Juliet, there's a, a significant amount of romance. It's very palpable. But even though there are scenes in this in this script and in the over, overall film featuring Han and Trish that that are sweet and charming, they never really become an item. They never really truthfully fall in love in any genuine capacity. Uh, I mean, they don't even. I don't even think they even share a kiss. And so it's one of those things where, okay, you have this romance angle, but it's not going anywhere, at least nowhere significant when it comes to the overall scope or, or the overall plot. And it's just one of those things where you're like, okay, why is this a Romeo and Juliet movie? If there's no genuine palpable romance between the two leads, uh, is it just because uh, you're trying to have something a little familiar for audiences to maybe sink their teeth into or for other critics to maybe give it a little bit more of a chance because it's trying to be a take on Romeo and Juliet, which is a classic Shakespeare tale. I don't know. I have no idea what it is. Um, I, I think I remember reading something that Aaliyah was at one point rumored to be in the Romeo and Juliet uh, film that ultimately uh, starred, uh, I think, was it Claire Danes? I think that might have been her. I could be wrong. I'm, I could be way off. I haven't seen that film in years. In fact, the only reason why I saw that film was for an English class. But yeah, she was going to co-star, I think, I, I believe in that, with Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio. But they decided to go in a different direction with it. And maybe that's why it's a Romeo and Juliet take. So Aaliyah can be in her Romeo and Juliet movie. I don't know. Um... But yeah, the feuding gang stuff is really typical and really tired and very cliched. Um, and it leads to a lot of just confused uh, moments in the script when it comes to who the villains are and what the stakes are and so on. It doesn't help either that the whole reason for this gang war is all, all surrounded uh around something that's also pretty mundane and kind of dumb like it's all surrounded around uh the Oakland Raiders yeah the the Los Angeles Raiders are going to Oakland and there's these shady deals that are going on with these rich white guys and then there there's the Chinese American gangs and then there's the, black, the African American gangs and they're feuding with one another and they're offing people and they're trying to get uh, real estate uh, contracts and they're buying things up so they can make a deal with the shady guys who are behind the move of the football team. And I'm like, I don't fucking care. I don't give a shit about any of this. So I, I don't really feel the script did a good job uh, in terms of making you actually care about the the drama or uh, the stakes and i appreciate the fact that it, it has a, a a different 
approach to uh uh some of uh, the um uh, you know the gangs for instance uh in particular Isaac O'Day and uh his daughter Trish and how he is actually not necessarily your typical ruthless uh been there done that uh cliched gangster he's he has more nuance there's more to him as a father and as somebody who is involved in organized crime and and i see what the script is trying to do with the character of mac but it doesn't do the best job in terms of making that character stand out or really feel like a genuine threat so what you have is just a film that's just kind of all over the place when it comes to the feuds and it just makes it so it's not nearly as compelling as it could be. Honestly, I feel you should. I, I feel you could have just focused more on the dynamic between Han and his father and Kai, and focus mostly on that. Have a little bit of the stuff involving uh, uh, the O'Day uh, gang and so on, but focus majorly on that angle. And beef up that aspect of the plot, uh, because I feel that's the stronger, that's a stronger uh, um, subplot, so to speak. So just focus on that, and really uh, make Kai into a much more memorable and intimidating villain and presence uh, in the overall story. So then, when you get to the fight at the end between Han and Kai, like it really has something epic. It has this undertone to it that really packs a punch. As it is, it's just one of those things where it, it honestly feels like it's the equivalent of a, a fighting game where you fight a mini boss and that's that's really about it. And it's and I really feel it's supposed to have a little bit higher stakes, but it, it doesn't really translate on the screen in the same way. Another thing that doesn't translate that well is the tone of the script. It's a mess. There are moments where it's trying to be very emotional and serious, like the scenes involving various members of the O'Day gang who get killed, or uh, Han's uh, brother who gets hung, or, or uh, a scene where uh, Trish is being emotional about the death of her brother, but then there's goofy football shenanigans during a pickup pick game of football in the park. There's the scenes involving Anthony Anderson's character and his uh, uh, gang of uh, total uh, uh, nimrods and just a bunch of guys acting the fool. And so you're like, okay, uh, is this supposed to be a comedy or is this supposed to be a serious, straightforward action film? Even some moments of, of inspired creativity are kind of undermined by other uh, bits in the script uh, or moments that were ad-libbed that are just kind of awkward. Like the whole scene where Han uses uh, Trish to fight this uh, female uh, motorcyclist because... For whatever reason, we can't have Han fight the girl. I don't understand why. I, I, I guess the whole point of that is, oh, well, you can't hit a woman. But there's even a line of dialogue where Trish is like, well, she's trying to kill you. So all bets are off. And then it's like, OK, yeah, all bets sh should be off in that scenario. Um, But no, for some reason, it's just turned into this farce. Like That whole scene was just laughable to me it really uh it took away a decent amount of momentum too because leading up to that scene any fight scene with han even the football scene even though it was kind of silly too it still showed han as somebody who can you know kick ass he could take names and then he's involved in this situation and he doesn't even want to get involved in a fight with this other girl because she's a girl. It's like, I mean, really? I, I like, I, I just never, I never understood that. And I, I don't, I don't get that in general when it comes to like a fighting movie. Like if you reverse the things, reverse the roles here, let's look at a Cynthia Rothrock movie, for instance, 
Like she kicks guys' asses all the time, and there's no problem there. Uh, and she even kicks uh, girls' asses in those movies. So, but it's a problem now that we have to work around in a ridiculous way by using Trish as a weapon. <laughs> like, it, I don't know how that's any better, to be honest. Uh, but there are other moments of creativity, though, in the script that I really liked in terms of the fights. Uh, for instance, how uh, Han uses zip ties in one scene is really inspired and yeah the football scene as dumb and as silly as it is at times with this wire foo and all of that it is unique and i will give it that and i didn't mind the fight between kai and han uh, i just wish that the character of kai was built up better and felt like he was more of a genuine character or more of an actual threat than what he ultimately was it seemed like to focus more on the stuff with uh, Han's father, which I understand, but for whatever reason, the stuff with Han's father, just despite the best efforts of the script, it just didn't really click that hard for me. So even in the moment where he ultimately kills himself at the end of the film because he's uh, ashamed, it didn't really carry the same weight that I that I feel the writers wanted it to i was just very indifferent on it because it was very indifferent on that character it just felt as just one of those oh well it's his father and his father is you know he's he's utilizing kai and this whole gang war in order to get a leg up and he's not who you think he is and so on and so forth and i, I don't know it just didn't really do that much for me uh, it felt like more soap opera kind of uh, cliches. But when it comes to the action stuff, that's where uh, Romeo Must Die shines when it comes to its script. Provides a lot of moments of high octane thrills, a uh, nice variety of, uh, of uh, fighting and gunplay and, and motorcycle chases or car chases. So it's one of those things where, yeah, that is definitely the, the main attraction to me when it comes to uh, the script. Not necessarily the moments where it's trying to be a serious uh, crime uh, drama with back and forth involving the, the two uh, warring factions and twists that you see coming a mile away. Uh, the cast, I think, is, for the most part, good. I, I, I think... Pretty much all across the board, the performers uh, are are pretty um, above average performance wise. Some being uh, legitimately great to me. Uh, Jet Li, he's at his best when it comes to scenes where he's not saying that many lines of dialogue, and he's just letting his feet and his fists do the talking. And I believe. That's a big reason why his performance is very limited in terms of his dialogue or in terms of anything else. There's not much emotion. There's not many scenes for him to try to emote. It's a very limited performance, but I think that's by design. So I'm not really going to be that hard on Jet Li. Because keep in mind, he's still starting out when it comes to being an English-speaking American actor at this point. So English isn't necessarily his biggest strong suit yet. He hasn't really developed his charisma and his personality in the same way that he would later on in other films. So he's just still kind of uh, working through uh, the kinks, so to speak. But when it comes to like him just being an action star, uh, he excels at that. Like He's great in this when it comes to his just physical uh, uh, talents as, as a... Uh, martial artist uh Aaliyah I thought was awesome I thought she was genuinely great as Trish she had a lot of charisma she had a lot of personality charm I felt she had a good amount of chemistry with Jet Li uh, I feel that Jet Li comes alive when it comes to the scenes with him and Aaliyah and we lost a, a 
genuine talent, like a great grand talent in the music industry, as well as potentially uh, further on in the film industry with Aaliyah. Because for a first time performer, like she knocked it out of the park here. Uh, and she was just a lot of fun to watch. She sent a lot of sparks on the screen every time she was up on it. Uh, you really loved to watch her work, and you really liked her. She was very personable, very likable. And then on top of that, there were moments where her character had to emote, and she did it very well. Like the scene where she's being emotional over the loss of her brother. So... Yeah, it's it's a damn shame that we lost her uh so so soon. Uh Isaiah Washington, I think he's a fine actor, but this is kind of a nothing role. Like the guy's supposed to be this jealous uh second uh uh hand man type character to Delroy Lindo's uh mob boss. Uh mob boss isn't the right word, but you know, gang boss. And I, I don't know. It's just, I, I don't blame him. I don't blame his performance. I think he did a fine job. I blame the script because he just feels like a, a character that's not really that well fleshed out. So I feel like he's let down because he's not given as much that he could do with it. But when it comes to him trying to be intimidating, I, I think it works. I, I think it does. Uh, I, and I think he plays the role with a lot of style too. Very stylish uh, performance. And I'm not just talking about the clothes that his character wears in the movie, but those are pretty stylish too. A Russell Wong as Kai, another similar sort of instance. I think he has a lot of style. He has a lot of flair. Uh, I think he can be intimidating too when he needs to be, but the character isn't really that well-rounded. So all, there's just really a lot of stuff where he looks cool. Like the opening scene at the, at the, at the bar or he, the scene where he blows up the, the boat and he's just standing in front of the camera and the boat's blowing up behind him and he's, you know, mean mugging the camera and, and slow motion. Like, you know, he's a guy who I think he can definitely play the role of a main heavy well, but only if he's given uh, uh, the most to work with. And I, you know, I, it's one, another one of those things. I think Isaiah Washington, Russell Wong, they were ultimately let down by the script uh, because the performances, I, I think by both were, were good. DMX, not really a big role, especially compared to something like belly that he did previously, but you know, he made the most that he could out of a little, uh, he was fine. He, he definitely had some charisma of his own in the few scenes that he was in. Uh, almost to the point where I would have liked to have seen him more. Might have been interesting to see DMX as the Mac role instead of Isaiah Washington and beef up that role a little bit more. Uh, Delroy Lindo as Isaac. I, I thought he was the other uh, performer out of the cast other than Aaliyah who I thought really brought it uh, consistently. It's actually one of my favorite performances of his. I, I just liked how he handled being the hard gang boss, but then also being a a, a, a good person at heart, at least to his family, especially to his daughter, and how he means well and how he's conflicted in terms of what he's doing. But, you know, he, he wants to get out of the game. That's why he's talking about going legit and being an owner of the football team. And... A lot of that just came across as very genuine, that this was a gang boss who, yeah, he could get shit done, but he also, he he means well. Like, he's just one of those individuals that, uh, you know, he's got a heart, but he's just stuck in, in, in a, a position where in order to make ends meet, in order to provide uh, a, a living for his family, you know, he's, he's, choosing a, a path that doesn't necessarily match his full integrity or who he is as a person. And, and that ultimate, that, that, that is something that does happen from time to time in reality, when it comes to these individuals that are involved in, in uh, gangs. Sometimes you have people like uh, Isaac O'Day, who they're not really necessarily trying to be 
uh, the, the biggest, the baddest criminal or the biggest, the baddest boss of all of the gangs trying to kill as many people as they possibly can and sell as many drugs. Sometimes you're just trying to just keep a, keep your foot in, uh, uh, in the door, so to speak, in terms of the gang world and just continue to provide for your family. Um, you also have like Henry O as a Chu, D.B. Woodside who plays Colin O'Day, Anthony Anderson as Maurice. Um, I, I I definitely want to mention Anthony Anderson because Anthony Anderson, even though his his scenes really did affect the tone of the film, I still had a lot of fun with that performance. Uh, I thought he was pr genuinely funny. Um. Not intimidating at all, but I think that's definitely the point of the character. Is that he's this guy who talks tough, but he really isn't shit. You know, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, for the most part, pretty pretty good cast. I, I, I honestly admit that. Um, with the best performers really being either Jet Li when it comes to him doing his martial arts and his fight choreography, or Aaliyah. And... You know, some good supporting uh, work by um, Russell Wong, Isaiah Washington, and Delroy Lindo. The cinematography by Glenn McPherson. I think at times it's fearless. I th and I, I do feel that adds a lot to the movie. But then there's other times where that fearlessness affects the film visually. Makes it look a little uh, uh, uneven. But... I, I believe that's kind of what the director was going for. So that's what you that's what you get here is you get scenes that are kind of inconsistent in terms of the way that they're shot, whether it's from the cinematographer or by the director. Uh, the editing is the same way by Derek uh, G. Uh, G. Brechin. Uh, there are some points in the film where the editing really adds an extra bit of adrenaline to the fight scenes or to the action. But then there's other sequences where the editing detracts from from uh, the scene, kind of takes you out of it a little bit because it's trying to do too much. And in large part, a lot of that has to do with these weird edits where Jet Li or another character will like fight somebody or knock somebody into something and it'll quick cut to an X-ray of somebody's neck crunching or some other bodily injury. And it's just jarring and not in a good way. I just thought it was just really awkward and just thrown in there. And the way it was edited wasn't very seamless. It just felt like it was just tossed in there. It could have been interesting if it was edited better, but it just looked like it was just literally cut and paste into certain scenes. And that that's... That's not really the right approach. Um, the music by Stanley Clark and Timbaland. Uh, I would say Timbaland's work is definitely the the bit of the score that stands out more. The uh, regular uh, average uh, uh, film score stuff. Pretty been there, done that. Not really anything that special. Uh, but Timbaland did some nice instrumental work. And the soundtrack in particular is uh, is just fire. This is just a fantastic, phenomenal soundtrack, which is so many great songs by uh, Aaliyah and DMX, and it's a great mix of R&B and hip hop. I mean, you got so many huge hits. I mean, Try Again by Aaliyah, Come Back in One Piece uh, with Aaliyah featuring DMX, I Don't Wanna with Aaliyah, uh, as well as uh, a lot of other songs that are are um, well worth listening to if you're a fan of that kind of music. And it adds a certain flavor, a certain vibe to this film that definitely does help it stand out in a good way. Um, and it's a big reason why the film was a hit, uh, because it combined hip-hop elements with martial arts and action. And I would say out of the two, I mean, that... Are similar in terms of uh, their uh, approach, um, both by the same director. I, I personally prefer Romeo Must Die over Exit Wounds, but Exit Wounds is, is still watchable. Although I feel like the Wire Foo stuff in this makes a little more sense because of the Asian influence 
and the Asian characters versus Exit Wounds. Having Steven Seagal do the wire foo stuff is, is just kind of bizarre and, and just really uh, weird and out there. Uh, Jet Li doing it, or Russell Wong, like, that's not really that much of a stretch. Um, although at times it can be a bit much. And I will admit it, the film is a bit too long. Like, it is almost two hours. I think that's too long for this movie. I really feel it should have been a more streamlined, more punchy, more fast-paced, cut out a good chunk of the feud between the warring factions because it really wasn't adding a ton to the movie in the first place. Um, and if you're going to do the romance, actually go f through with the romance. I know why the original ending wasn't used. The original ending had Aaliyah and Jet Li kissing, uh, but that was cut and they reshot the ending because they felt like it was a bad tonal shift after uh han's dad killed himself and i'm like yes you could interpret it that way but you had bad tonal shifts throughout the script anyway so it wouldn't be that out of place also it solidifies the whole romance subplot if you they don't even do anything then that they never really take that next step then it's just a just a giant tease throughout the majority of the story and to me, that that's that's not really very satisfying. And especially for the time, that would have been huge, like an interracial thing. And I I heard that was another reason why, because of the controversy, the controversy involving uh, an interracial kiss, which I think that's just awful. And it's just terrible that that was a problem to some people back then. Uh, and honestly, sadly, to some people now, but less now than than then, apparently. But I, I think Aaliyah and Jet Li, they were a good couple. So just have have that whole arc culminate in something. Otherwise, it just it just feels like there there really wasn't a point to the whole thing, um, especially if you're trying to be a Romeo and Juliet type of story. But. I still had fun with it, mainly for the action, uh, for the soundtrack, for the stylish direction, and it is a film that I would recommend if if you are a fan of um, martial arts films, especially Jet Li. If you're a Jet Li fan, I'm pretty sure you've already seen this, but if you have, for whatever reason you haven't checked it out yet, it's definitely worth uh, uh, seeing, at least once. Um... But yeah, I don't know what else to say about Romeo Must Die, except thanks for watching my review, and until next time, I'll see you later. See ya.